Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that we may hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jer Jerusalem with Aeneas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power and by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord.
a reading from 1 John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in words or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we'll, and we'll reassure our hearts for him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Just as he has commanded us, all who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. 
and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have, no, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay, down, lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, it's Good Shepherd Sunday, y'all, and uh, this is the Sunday where we say our farewells to each other after two years of walking this road together. Can you believe that? Two years of walking together? It's been something. We started out on a familiar path, didn't we? Knowing our time together would be an intentional time of transition, you know, um, a bit like the uh, Hebrew people wandering in the wilderness for a while before they got to the promised land. Uh, I can remember even in the adult forums early on, that's how we explained what, what this interim time would be like. And uh, it's be like going through the wilderness. We just didn't know how much like that scripture story it was going to be. We wandered a lot, had unexpected surprises, had to find our way. Sometimes we had to make our way. Sometimes we had to feel our way. And more than ever, this body had to rely on one another. And now on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we're just about out of the woods. I was climbed up into this pulpit at the 7.30, and I thought, okay, almost out of the woods. And I got up in this pulpit, and the lights went out. <laughs> one last ha-ha. <laughs> uh, one more surprise, but the lights are on. Thank you, Ray Lewis and others. Um, so here we are almost out of the woods. The weight of the pandemic is lifting and new life, you can feel it all around us, is happening. Church life is breaking open again. And St. James is so very close to welcoming exciting new possibilities ahead. And so how wonderful can it be that we are gathered here on this particular sun Sunday with the image of the Good Shepherd to comfort all of us and to reassure us. Now, most of us living in this area, um, myself included, don't have a real good working image of a good shepherd. You know, we just don't see them going down Capitol Street too often. We've had very little life experience with farm life and the day in and day out care of sheep. Sheep are known to us mainly through the wool garments that we buy in clothing stores or maybe through the meat department of our grocery store. But in the days of Jesus, people knew what a shepherd was and they really knew what a good shepherd was. They saw them daily. And many around them were shepherds themselves. And in the Jewish tradition, the good shepherd became the image of their most prominent king, King David who before he rose to power and glory was a lowly shepherd himself. He knew from the beginning how to care for the people. I've only had one real experience with a true shepherd before, and that was when I was on a mission trip in Navajo land in southern Utah, just across the border of Arizona. We took a, a youth group to build a shade house for an elderly grandmother and her granddaughter. Her granddaughter was a bona fide shepherd. Her name was April, and she was an unlikely shepherd. First of all, she was, uh, she was female. You don't see too many female shepherds. That was unusual right there. She was a she. But this shepherd, April, also had Down syndrome. And on the reservation, I can only imagine her life. Uh, it left her quite limited and apparently unwanted. But her grandmother had taken her in and they had taken care of each other. There she had place and purpose. 
There she had a life, helping her grandmother and tending the sheep. So day in and day out, under that hot, hot sun, April led the sheep from the makeshift pen to the sparse grazing area nearby under the looming mesas. And there April would sit patiently. Actually, she would squat and, and remain that way, it, it seemed, for hours, all day while the animals grazed. And then, at the end of the day, she would lead them carefully home and back into the pen. And this she did day in and day out. Neither April nor her grandmother communicated with us very much as we worked on the build of the shade house. And uh, it we, we was mainly limited to gestures and facial expressions and, and that kind of thing. Um, and that, that only added to my curiosity about her and her way of life. They were very pleased with us in the end. I can remember the last night there, we had kind of a celebratory meal, and the grandmother walked out with all of her Indian jewelry, the cuffs, the squash blossoms. She was adorned with everything she could, and it was her way of saying, I'm honoring you. Thank you. We had built that summer home for them, I guess, you know, and that was, that was big. So now on the last day when we pulled out, April had already left the house and taken the sheep across the way for grazing. And when we were pulling out along that dusty road, I happened to look back and my eye caught this scene of the flock, the shepherd, the, the sheep all gathered. And just beyond them, hmm, 20 feet, maybe 30, sat April, again squatting. But the unusual piece was she was not facing the sheep as you would imagine that she would. We would watch this over the sheep, right? Instead, she was facing away from the sheep. <coughs> that has stayed with me for a very long time. And now I, I think I'm beginning to get it. April did not watch her sheep. She listened for her sheep. She listened to them. Now, I look at that story that, that Jesus gives us, and I have to wonder who's who in our modern day uh, image of all of that. Who's the good shepherd? Is it David? Is it Abram? Is it me? No. <laughs> Y'all, we're the hirelings. We're here because it's fun. <laughs> we're, here, we're here to enjoy y'all. And we're, we're not the ones who are here day in and day out making sure everyone is fed. You've done that. You are the shepherds. In my two years with you, you have been patient with one another. I, you have been. You have created space for each other. You, where healing has been needed, you've allowed that to happen. You created space for people to talk when that was needed, to remember and to sort things out and to name the good and let go of what was not useful anymore. You cared for one another. So, you know, we, we go into a year and everything's looking good and surprise, <laughs> there's a pandemic. But even through that long haul, with all of its strains and stresses, you shepherded one another and stayed together as one flock in this part of God's kingdom. It's really and truly, from my perspective, been remarkable to watch and a real privilege to be a part of. You know, we have a saying in my family, hoc olam miminisi awuavat. If you've read your Homer lately, you'll know what I just said. All right, I've never read Homer, but some people might know what that means. It's something my grandfather gave us, and what it means is that someday this too will be pleasant to be to be, to, this too will be pleasant to remember. 
And what it's saying is that, that sometimes we go through things in life and they're hard and, and they're maybe sometimes painful, but in time and distance we look back and we go, you know, it was all right. We got through that. We made our way. And we get that distance, I think, maybe from this pandemic we might be able to look back and see with no small amount of pride the way that we moved through this wilderness. A stronger people, perhaps. The challenges that we met, the problems we solved, the struggles we came through with the colorful masks, the red tape on the floor, and heaven help us sign up sheets well, maybe they'll all be remembered with a little bit of humor even, perhaps. I, I was just sitting here thinking about how often I looked at these beautiful windows of yours. Sometimes you were here and sometimes you were online, but I, I got curious about them. I mean, uh, the top of that one right there looks like a cell phone. and. Uh, <laughs> And I started looking at the little people. Haven't you always been fascinated by the little people in the windows? You know, you can't tell if they're male or female or who they're supposed to be. Well, the longer I've looked at them over the past year, I promise you they look like they're wearing masks. <laughs> your future, your future is good. Your future is strong. And as you go into that future, trust the Good Shepherd. Trust the one who laid down his life in love for each and every one of us, the one who knows each and every one of us by name. Stay close to the one true Shepherd who is always there for us, whether it is beside the still waters or passing through the valley of the shadow of death. Continue to learn his gentle ways. Continue to follow him. Continue to receive nurture from him. Listen for him. Seek his face in those, these your fellow travelers and in the Aprils of your lives. Seek him in the priest who is yet to come. Make space for her or him to live among you, break bread with you, make Christ known with you. Let that priest know you as I have come to know you as the faithful people of God. And until we meet again, may our loving God, our one true good shepherd, Hold all of us in the palm of his hand. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Even the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The prayers of the people, form three, are found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. Praying especially for our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Brian, our clergy, Marion, David, and Abram. We also pray for those discerning the call for the next rector of St. James, that we may find a faithful pastor for our people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. They may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. Praying especially for our Mayor Chokwe, our Governor Tate, our President Joe, for this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, as we face the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic, for the medical community, for first responders, for teachers and their students, for families who are together, and for families who are apart, that we all may find faith over fear. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Praying especially for William Causey, Joe, Henry Fox, David and Susan. Millicent Painter, Shelley Wiley, Amanda Lockie, Zane Pooley, William, Kit Parker, Bianca, Jurger, Grace, Libby, Arthur, Merwin Reed, Charlotte Charles, Tom Christian, Bob Myers, Caroline, Adam, Ray Shaw and family, Peggy Phillips, Tom and Margie Manning and family. Are there others? Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Praying especially for Jim Davis, Ladarius Smith, Gloria Minor, Sherry Hoffmeister, Susan Allenberger, William Knight, Will Fanning, Catherine Hobart Adams, and all who have died from COVID-19 around the world. Are there others? Give the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Praying especially for those in the United States Armed Forces, we remember Charles, Frank Anderson, Frank Finnegan, Brian White, Bill Copland. William Hill, William Hotsis, Graham Baxter, Gus Carroll, Austin Boroff, Brian Tracy, Rodney, Cole and Austin Bowman, Taylor Ellison, Foster Ogden, 
and Logan Cannon, a Canaan. Are there others? Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. To be seated for just a moment, I'm going to ask the wardens to come up. If you'll turn in your bulletin, um, you'll see the ending of a pastoral relationship. It's a rather curious thing, it seems, doesn't it? But, it, but it's, neat, it's necessary. And so we will go through this little liturgy, and I will hand back the keys to the kingdom to, uh, <laughs> to Lee and Thad. And um, so... My brothers and sisters, on the fifth day of May, 2019, I was empowered by Bishop Brian Sage to serve as Interim Rector of St. James. I have, with God's help and to the best of my abilities, exercised the trust, accepting its privileges and responsibilities. As prescribed by mutual, uh, previous mutual consent, it is now time for me to leave this charge and I publicly state that my tenure as interim rector at St. James ends this day. Why don't y'all stand now? Uh, do you, the people of St. James, recognize and accept the conclusion of this pastoral relationship? We do. All right, here we go. The keys. I'll need those back tomorrow. <laughs> Let us say this together. O oh God, you have bound us together for a time as priests and people to work for the advancement of your kingdom in this place. We give you humble and hearty thanks for the ministry which we have shared in these past years. Now we pray, be with those who leave and with those who stay, and grant that all of us by drawing ever nearer to you may always be close to each other in the communion of your saints. All this we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord. <laughs> before we do the piece, let me, let me just say to you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's been a great joy to be with you, and, and what fun we've had. And I am thrilled to tell you um, that I'm now going to go sit in a pew some with my husband, uh, my good shepherd, and uh, spend some time with him and just enjoy life in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, with many good memories of you. So thank you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also peace, my friend. <laughs> peace. Mm. Peace, Lee. Peace, you. Peace, brothers. Good morning and Christ peace to all of you, uh, along with the passing of the keys, I guess this is the passing of the announcements. Uh, it's now my, uh, now it's, uh, now I, I get to do them, I guess. Uh, but, uh, but on that note, uh, if you would please join me one more time in thanking Marion for her time here with us. And on the 
realm of gratitude, uh, the Banquet of Abundance that was this past week was a fantastic success, and we want to recognize and give thanks for all of those uh, who not only attended, but for who decorated table, who hosted, who gave donations, and uh, certainly to our chairs, Karen Taylor and uh, Mary Sheely Scanlon, and who found a way to make uh, such an event happen during this time, so thank you to all of those uh, involved. Camp Bratton Green. Uh, Camp Bratton Green is happening this year. Uh, it's just happening in a very different way. Uh, we will not be on property at Grace Center like we normally are. We are being hosted by St. Andrew's uh, uh, North Campus in Ridgeland. Registration is now open, so if you have a third grader through a 10th grader, please make sure you sign up because it's even though it's going to be a very unique summer, it's going to be a very wonderful summer, and we look forward to gathering together in Christ's name at St. Andrew's School. Uh, and right now, I'd like to uh, invite up our Director of Youth Ministries, Patrick. Thank you, I'll keep it brief. I know we've been doing a lot in celebrating Marion. Um, so I want to announce for those who have been supporting the youth and bought ferns, they are here for pickup. You can come after the service to the youth wing at the uh, door on the parking lot side and pick your up and pay if you need to. Uh, and then other than that, on May 9th, Mother's Day, and May 16th, uh, during service, we're going to be celebrating some of our youth. So on May 9th, Mother's Day, our seniors, graduating seniors, and on May 16th, some of our 7th and 8th graders. So we hope that you will join us those days. Um, and if you are in those families, please come and sign up. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Patrick, and thank you to all who are supporting our youth. And I'll just uh, quickly say, please join us next week, either in person or online, for our annual visit with Bishop Brian Sage, who will be joining us. Uh, but for now, let us ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his court.
us offer this Eucharist to the glory of God in thanksgiving for you, the people of St. James, for its staff, for this choir, for these my brothers, Abram and David. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with James and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever Amen. and now as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Divine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>